in the country. President Buhari inaugurates landmark projects in Ogun State. I call on all Nigerians, corporate bodies, multinational organizations to key into the goals of the Trust Fund to enable it to accomplish its mission. Police receives massive boost in efforts to secure Nigeria. The leader must recognize that the whole point of the civil service and government agencies must therefore be to facilitate and enable individuals, corporations and other commercial entities. Civil service reforms, Vice President of Shimbaju calls for efficient leadership. A lot of people were thrown out of business. A lot of people simply did their business on Twitter. Plus, Nigerians react with joy to Twitter's comeback, express optimism over gains touted by authorities. Good evening. This is NTA Network News. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja. Adiola Komiakere joins us from Lagos. Welcome. Multiple visionary and trailblazing projects executed under the ISEA development pillars of the Ab Abiodun administration in Ogun State have been inaugurated. President Mohamed Buhari, who performed the ceremony, described as impressive and uh, qualitative the standard of the projects, as well as the innovative ways that resources were deployed for their execution. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. It was indeed a homecoming of sorts for President Muhammadu Buhari, who described himself as Omoale as he arrived the Gateway State on his first official visit to any part of the country in the new year. This is where he started his military career in the 60s, and the hospitality of the people, as he noticed, has not waned. President Buhari is, however, more impressed with what he called a clear example of constructive engagement, cooperation, and collaboration between the federal and Ogun state governments in the execution of critical transformation projects, some of which he inaugurated include the 14-kilometer Ijebu Ode Mojoda Epe Expressway to link Lagos to Ogun states through the Lekki Industrial Corridor and complement the Shagamu Benin Expressway, as well as the 42 kilometer Muhammad Buhari Shagamu interchange Abekuta dual carriageway reconstructed by the state government to link the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The president also inaugurated the iconic Gateway City Gate project, a park beautification monument depicting the joining of hands for building the future of Ogun State in togetherness. Also inaugurated by President Muhammad Buhari are two housing estates for low, medium and high income earners at Kobape and Okemosang. They include the 527 units Prince Court and the first phase of the 85 units King's Court Estates, some of which costing as low as 6 million naira per unit. We like to inform that all these projects are interrelated. They are not just projects. They are also part of our agenda for development and have been deliberately conceived and implemented to also achieve employment generation, poverty elevation and local capacity development as most of the people working on this project are local artisans, technicians, tradesmen and women. President Buhari urges Governor Dapo Abiodun not to raise on his oars as the reward for success is more hard work to meet the increasing expectations of the people. Your Excellency, well done. I am proud of what you have done for your state and your people. You have made our great party, the APC, proud of two. You are our example of promises made, promises kept. These lofty projects could not have materialized without your huge investment and commitment to security of lives and property. This has made Ogun State one of the safest and most peaceful states in the country and the investor's destination of choice. You have justified the mandate of the people of Ogun State 
you have represented our party very well. President Buhari believes that when state governments deliver impactful projects in consultation with stakeholders as witness in the gateway state, the trajectory of Nigeria's national development will be enhanced. From Abekuta, Ogun State, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Well, three critical roads infrastructure projects in Ogun State, the Lagos Ota, Abekuta, Songu Ota, Idiroku and Shagamu Gijo roads, are to be reconstructed by the federal government under the tax credit scheme. President Muhammad Buhari gave the assurance while addressing the people of Ugun State during his one-day official visit to the state. Here again is Adam Sambu with the details. Part of the request forwarded to President Muhammad Buhari for special attention by Governor Dapo Abiodun towards enhancing the socio-economic development of the state. President Buhari, who was bestowed with an honorary indigenship as symbolized by the presentation of the key to the gateway state of possibilities to him, appreciated the silent but effective achievements of Governor Abiodun, describing him as deliverer of good governance. The three roads projects to be undertaken by the federal government, he said, will go a long way in complementing efforts at taking Ogun State to the next level by the Abiodun administration. I congratulate the people of Ogun State for having such a focused, deliberate and inclusive administration under the watch of His Excellency Prince Dabo Abiodun. I enjoin you to continue to support him for the successful implementation of the Building Our Future Together agenda of his administration. Your support is required to deliver more development projects that will ensure an improved social economic development of the state and individual prosperity of the citizenry. Governor Dapo Abiodun said the people of Ogun, the gateway state of possibilities, cannot thank President Buhari enough for the unprecedented support and assistance to his administration in his genuine commitment to delivering inclusive, accountable, focused and qualitative governance. Beyond these physical projects, we have also embarked on several fiscal and policy reforms to enable effectiveness and efficiency of government. All these have led to an increased IGR in the year 2021, a COVID year of about a hundred billion naira. The chairman of Ogun State Traditional Council, Akaribo of Remo Land, Oba Babatunde Ajayi, also appreciated the president for his visit, assuring him that Ogun State is in good and indeed safe hands. And by coming here today, so, so much respect for us all and show so much respect for Ogun State, we will not forget you. And as you prepare to exit, you will not have cause to regret. This country will remain grateful. And to our son, this is the man that is just, it is the man that is fair, it is the man that is equitable. I am going to say that development in Ogun State is unprecedented. During the visit, the government and people of Ogun State once again thanked President Buhari for the honor done to the late M.K. Abiola, an indigent of the state. The Buhari presidency not only posthumously conferred on Chief Abiola the highest national honor of the Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, but also named the Abuja National Stadium after him for his ultimate sacrifice in enthroning democracy. From Abekuta, Ogun State, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. A total of 200 brand new Buffalo trucks have now joined the fleet of the Nigeria Police Force. This is in addition to over 8 billion naira worth of security gadgets purchased to enhance the performance of the police in crime fighting. Francis Fum reports that the equipment procured by the Nigeria Police Trust Fund was presented to the Inspector General of Police, Usman al Kali Baba, by the Minister of Police Affairs, Mohammed Megari Ingyati in Abuja. The procurement of this multi-billion naira buffalo trucks, bulletproof jackets, helmets and medicals for the Nigeria Police Force is in line with its mandate of funding the police with the needed logistics. 
This is part of the ongoing reformation. Minister of Police Affairs, who stood in for President Mahmoudou Buhari, said the presentation of these security gadgets is part of the ongoing reformation of the Nigeria Police Force, modern security infrastructure to aid policing in Nigeria. The administration of President Mohamed Buhari is adequately poised to give all that is necessary to the Nigerian Police Trust Fund with a view to enable it to meet its mandate and attend the expectations of Nigeria Police Force and Nigerians in general. Let me assure you of our support, as always, and legislative intervention where necessary. The trust fund currently depends substantially on the revenue accruing from the Federation account. This the IGP is not comfortable with. I call on all Nigerians corporate bodies, multinational organizations to key into the goals of the Trust Fund to enable it accomplish its mission. I am also delighted to note that all the items provided by the Trust Fund for the Nigeria Police Force were largely in line with requisite professional specifications. The choice of this Buffalo Trust are based on its ruggedness and ability to move fast in various geographical terrain. Also, thank Mr. President for supporting the board and the management in ensuring that we move closer day in, day out in achieving the objectives of the Trust Fund. The cordial relationship existing among the force, Police Trust Fund, and the Ministry of Police Affairs led to the procurement and the delivery of the operational assets meets the required global standards. Franks is from NTA News. A highly capable and professional bureaucracy is second to none in the development of any country. This was the submission of Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju when he delivered a special lecture on strategic leadership, the essential skills organized by the Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation. State House correspondent Jidi Unifadi reports. This is the key. If it works, everything works. If it fails, plans and policies are hardly worth the paper that they are written on. The, bu the bureaucracy literally holds the future of the nation in its hands. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo speaking on the importance of effective civil service and the essential skills those in position of leadership must have in carrying out their roles as leaders. And in the case of government economic policies and programs, strategic leaders says must understand the objectives, such as creating an enabling environment for others to thrive. So the strategic leader must acknowledge the stark reality that without the private sector, we do not have an economic plan. This must then inform the way the strategic leader thinks, plans, and acts. The leader must recognize that the whole point of the civil service and government agencies must therefore be to facilitate and enable individuals, corporations, and other commercial entities. Policies and programs of government, he says, require understanding and strategic interpretation by the civil service for effective implementation. Every time a public officer is an obstacle to business in any way, he attacks the prosperity of our economy and he attacks the prosperity of our future. The civil service of Nigeria should step up and take their rightful place so that the trajectory of growth that we are leaving behind will not be squandered by those that will come after us. Equip our civil servants with necessary tools to carry out the onerous responsibility that you know, we put on them. The special lecture was organized for the 120 pioneer participants of the Leadership Enhancement and Development Program of the Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation. A key objective of League P is to further expose participants and enable them to gain multi-sectorial experience so as to deepen understanding of their role in the growth and development of the country. In Abuja, Jide Onifade, NJ News. And Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has inaugurated a 23-member governing board of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, 
for the charged members to eschew corruption, as government will not hesitate to sanction all infractions. Without a governing board for six years, with the board now in place, its role is to give policy direction to the EFCC and support the Commission's mandate to prevent, investigate, prosecute and penalize economic and financial crimes within and outside the country, as well as fight terrorism. Evolve ways and means of dealing with the sophistry that criminals have imbibed. It has created a doubt as to the sincerity of people doing business with us outside the shores of our country. So we must do everything. And you are the ones that have assigned the responsibility of creating a new image for Nigeria. You cannot be an agency that is supposed to pretend over the fight of corruption and to be found indulging in the same malice. Well, EFCC Chairman Abdul Rashid yeah, Bawa, who doubles been, as uh, Executive uh, Chairman of the board, know, says the Commission yeah. is not resting on its oars despite more than 2,000 convictions recorded last year. We had 98.54% success rate in court. But with the inauguration of this board, I believe, and the wealth of experience that all of us are bringing to the board, we'll be able to do better. Sophisticated technology, he says, will be deployed to aid the detection and prosecution of financial crimes in the country. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. All bilateral cooperation between Nigeria and Namibia has contained on the platform of the first joint commission held in 1992 is to be activated in the interest of both countries. This was captured in discussions between Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed and the Namibian High Commissioner to Nigeria in Abuja. Anthony Forsen reports. And signed during the 1992 meeting is aimed at strengthening ties between the two nations to cover culture, tourism, information, education, sports, and social development. Pointing at the role Nigeria has always played on the African continent, particularly in the liberation of sister African nations, which include Namibia, Information and Culture Minister Lion Mohamed recalled the myriad of assistance offered them in stabilizing as independent states. We had always believed that until every country is independent and liberated in Africa, no country will be safe from colonization. And that informed why Nigeria plays such a role. Because Nigeria also set up the Technical Aid Corps, which regularly sends young professionals to many countries in Africa, the Caribbean and even the Pacific. And I think Namibia has not been an exception. Going forward, the minister pointed out that a machinery be put in place to fast track the process that will see the takeoff of the MOU. On our part, they set up a small committee that would look into how we can follow up and actualize some of the you know, offers and some of the issues that uh, we have discussed today. So that it will not just be another talk show. Lai Mohamed, however, assured that the animals which Namibia donated to Bauchi State Wildlife are doing well and have multiplied. On his part, the Namibian High Commissioner to Nigeria assured that documents for the reopening of the MOU are ready and February has been scheduled for the meeting to consider all the various areas of cooperation between both countries. The last time the Commission met was in 2010. And I think amongst the agreements that were agreed is that there needs to be practical cooperation between the NTA, the Nigeria Television Authority, and its Namibian counterpart, the NBC. So we will be working with the Permanent Secretary and colleagues to see that those agreements, we find them from 2010, and that we can see what is still outstanding. What can we do to bring NTA to Namibia? There are thousands of Nigerians living heavily in Namibia. The High Commissioner was quick to remind the Minister of Namibia's film industry to partner with Nigeria's Nollywood. He also requested for cooperation between the two countries to help upgrade beef production infrastructure as well as Nigerian companies to invest in Namibia's oil and gas sector. In Abuja, 
Anthony Forson, NTA News. And time for our first break. We'll be back shortly. Stumble into an opportunity at your own convenience. What if you stumble? Stumble into a friendly stranger and all you had to do is wave. What if? What if you unlock the opportunity of a lifetime with this new acquaintance in a branded shirt? What if all you have to do is your favorite things in your favorite places? Shopping at the mall, having a weekend getaway, or going to the movies? Your future is right outside your door. We are closer than you think. friend as 2021 ends we share your gratitude for its blessings we acknowledge your low moments too and wish you strength to carry through at bedmate we'll keep making a living better because we believe that furniture is not just an item made of wood glass marble or steel but a symbol of your unity and good times with your loved ones we wish you a merry christmas and a happy new year full of all the finest things you desire the Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria, Refan, in collaboration with the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, will unveil world's largest rice pyramid in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. The event is scheduled to take place on the 18th of January, 2022. Venue, Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Trade Fair Complex, Airport Road, Abuja. The pyramids will be unveiled by the Special Guest of Honor and President Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari. Other special guests that will support are the Presidents of Benin Republic, Niger, Chad and Cameroon, as well as the Governors of Cross River, Eboin, Kebi, Jigawa, Ekiti and Sokoto States. Chairman of the occasion, CBN Governor Dr. Godwin Emefele, Chief Host, FCT Minister. Rifan will also use the occasion to flag off its 2021-2022 dry season farming activities and celebrate the annual National Rice Festival. Rifan has been the major driver of rice value chain under the Anko Borrowers Program for the past six years. Come and join us in celebrating rice revolution in Nigeria. Let's celebrate our president, Muhammad Buhari's initiative on food security and self-sufficiency in rice. Let's celebrate the Central Bank Governor, Dr. Godin Emefele, Rifan, the driver of rice revolution in Nigeria. Nigeria, announcer, publicity committee. The reason we are gathered here today is to fulfill the first promise to invest 100 million US dollars to identify, train, mentor, and seed 10,000 entrepreneurs in 10 years. I'm from Ghana, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Sudan, Rwanda, Niger, Sudan, Gabon. I hear stories of how entrepreneurs are transforming their communities already. The secret is the training I got from Tony Lumelu Foundation, and I'm so grateful to them. We took the money that we had from Tony Lumelu, and we did $1.6 million last year. It's amazing. The hope that has been brought back to these young Africans, the can do spirit. The future of Africa is in your hands. Become a Tony Alumelu entrepreneur. Apply now. On behalf of the government and good people of River State, I sincerely welcome all governors elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to River State for the PDP Governors Forum meeting taking place in Port Harcourt on the 16th and 17th of January 2022. My esteemed brothers who are part of the mission to rescue Nigeria as you touch down to the warmth reception of rivers people, you will experience the beauty of a rapidly growing state. PDP governors, you are welcome. Announcer, His Excellency Yesom Izumawiki, Governor, River State, C-O-N, G-S-S-R-S, P-O-S, Africa. Thanks for staying with us. President Mohamed Buhari has expressed sadness about the fresh killings in Basa local government 
of Plateau State, saying that the recent incident is not in keeping with the principles of the peace agreements reached between the Irigwe and the Fulani in the area. The president, who commended Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong for the way the state government is handling the matter, said his thoughts are with the families of the victims in this time of grief. The president urged the various communities in the area and particularly the Plateau State Interreligious Council to do everything possible to commit to the peace agreement and prevent it from falling apart. And President Muhammad Buhari has formally commiserated with the family of the late Chief Ernest Shunekon over the demise of the former head of the interim national government. Chief Shunekon died two days ago at the age of 85. President Buhari, who personally visited the Koyi residence of the late elder statesman, was accompanied by the governors of Lagos, Yobi and Ogun states. He extended deepest condolences to Chief Shunekon's wife, Margaret, his children and other family members over the sad loss. The president, who had earlier issued his condolences, notes that Chief Shunekon demonstrated to all that the love for country and commitment to its development, peace and unity, transcend the trappings of office and the transient nature of political power. President Buhari believes that Nigeria owes a great debt to Chief Shunekon, the peacemaker, who even at the twilight of his life never stopped believing and working for a prosperous and democratic country. Presidential media advisor Femi Adeshino speaks on the significance of the visit. Chief Shenekon was head of state. That was what he was called when he was head of the interim national government. He was, by that virtue, a member of the National Council of State. He was uh, in the league of former leaders of this country. Therefore, at his passage, it is only fit and proper that the sitting president should condole with his family. And that was what President Buhari has just done today. I think uh, most of the books of the religions urge us to rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. That is what President Buhari has just obeyed. What did you tell the family? Oh, their father was a great man. <laughs> They should not sorrow unduly, they should be comforted. They will miss him, however old any loved one is. Such person will still be missed. They will miss him, but they should be comforted by the quality of life he lived. Meanwhile, the national flag continues to fly at half-mast for a second day running in honor of the former head of the interim national government, Chief Ernest Shunekon. Described as a national loss, government and private offices across the country are said to have substantially complied with the directive as a mark of respect for the former head of government. While the country awaits official news on the final interment of the elder statesman, echoes of his contributions to national politics and governance still reverberate across the country. Though his stay as head of government was brief, Past leaders, including former military heads of state General Yakubu Gowan and General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr, argue that the value of a leader is judged by impact on society and people's perception of such leaders' unique style of fostering inclusiveness. On both fronts, they scored Chief Ernest Junekon high, a move also embraced and endorsed by former President Ulusha Basanjo. Also in agreement is former Ogun State Governor Ibikunle Amusu, who is the current senator representing Ogun Central Senatorial District, incidentally where late Chief Shunekon hails from. Senator Ibikunle Amosu noted that Egbaland has lost an illustrious son, while Nigeria equally lost an inspirational, charismatic and selfless leader. While Senator Amosu and the rest of Ogun Central are still in mourning, they are however quick to recall that former, the former leader was cherished and respected by the people and Nigerians of all walks of life until his demise. The establishment of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission has been a veritable link to connect Nigeria and its citizens abroad 
as well as ease the way for them to engage in activities to boost the Nigerian economy. Now, beaming the such light on the Commission's achievements so far, correspondent of Biageli Ugoke reviews efforts and interventions of the Nigerian and Diaspora Commission NIDCOM in the year 2021. I want to know the cause of, of, of our debt. Issues buzzing on the continued maltreatment of Nigerians in the diaspora, from xenophobic attacks in South Africa to slavery in Libya, unlawful detention and killings, denial of work permits in UAE, among other issues, heralded the activities of Nigerians in the diaspora in the year 2021. We're dealing with human lives, we're dealing with people, we're dealing with um, people who just need help. So you don't sit back and say, oh, I, have, I don't have money or I don't have, just do it. And that's what I've done on television anyway. So it's about governance about people. Saddled with the responsibility of engaging and utilizing the human capital and material resources of this demography in the socio-economic, cultural and political development of Nigeria, NITCAM embarked on rescue missions and interventions to ameliorate attacks on Nigerians and ensure justice is served in all cases. Ali Zainab is one of such victims who got justice through NITCAM. That time around 1.30 a.m., um, the policemen just came inside our room. They just bound inside the hotel room. They were accusing of us uh, of bringing illegal drugs to their country. We work with our missions abroad to follow the mandate of the president to ensure that we intervene in the cases affecting our brothers and sisters abroad. Her homecoming expressed her profound gratitude to the commission. Chairman of the Nigerian Interspirit Commission, Abika Dabire Rewa, also noted that while COVID-19 is still on rampage, NITCOM, in collaboration with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Nigerian missions around the world, have evacuated thousands and are still evacuating stranded Nigerians anywhere in the world. Nigerians have commended the efforts of the diasporas worldwide and the establishment of the commission by President Muhammad Buhari to engage and utilize nation's human capital resources. This achievement is demonstrated in annual diaspora remittances into Nigeria, which increased to 15.6% according to CBN Review, projecting Nigeria as the largest recipient of remittances inflows in sub-Saharan region of Africa. Africa in 2021. But now we're looking beyond remittances into investments into the economy of Nigeria. In May 2021, the Commission was listed among the 20 outstanding ministries, departments and agencies of government are judged as performing in the year 2021. Other achievements of the Commission includes State Diaspora Focal Point Officers Meetings, Launch of National Diaspora Policy, Diaspora Housing Program, Launch of of diaspora homecoming, launch of diaspora database portal, the unveiling of plus 600 diaspora icons at 60, which celebrates the amazing success stories of Nigerians living in the diaspora. Obiagili Ugoke, NTA News. Reactions continue to trail the federal government's lifting of the ban on Twitter, which became effective earlier today. ICT correspondent Joseph Johnson, while following the development, reports that there is a sense of gratitude in the public domain, especially for users whose livelihoods were affected by the suspension. Okay, let me bottom line this for you by rephrasing a nursery rhyme. It is no longer fly away Twitter, but rather it is now come back Twitter, meaning the bluebird is back in town. Now, it is believed that most Nigerians, especially lovers of the platform, stayed up late at night to confirm if the lift on the suspension was indeed true. Well, I did too. And as expected, tweeting and retweeting have since resumed. The federal government's decision to lift the suspension on Twitter operations after over six months is coming on the heels of an earlier dialogue between Twitter and the government of Nigeria, leading to Twitter agreeing to fulfill all conditions which address legal registration of operations, taxation and management of prohibited publication in line with the Nigerian laws. 
Some Nigerians who heaved a sigh of relief on the lifted suspension commended the federal government for the action. And now that it's resolved, I'm hoping that we can uh, have some restoration of what has been lost. A lot of people were thrown out of business. A lot of people simply did their business on Twitter. Because Twitter has a huge demography that cuts across cultures and boundaries across continents. The case of fake news and the likes, there are ways that can, it, can be, it can be managed. Uh, for me, it's a welcome development, the stress of buying newspapers with your Twitter. You just go to the trending stories. So, short of Twitter made me, you know, move to uh, focus on Instagram and other options, which is good. I mean, it even helped me, I would say. Recall that in June 2021, the federal government announced the suspension of Twitter after the social media platform deleted a tweet by President Muhammad Buhari, which led to telecommunications companies eventually blocking access to Twitter after receiving a directive from the Nigerian Communications Commission NCC to that effect. As a result, research has shown that Nigeria's economy and Twitter lost billions of naira to the shutdown of the platform's operations. That's all in the past now as both parties are off the table and forging ahead with the bluebird on one hand and caution on the other. So, get tweeting Nigeria. Joseph Johnson, NTN News. And policy and economy expert Ubin Naya Uruakpa joins me in the studio to speak more on Twitter's comeback and the projected impact of some of the agreements reached between the federal government and uh, Twitter. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. Well, what are your thoughts on the agreements to allow Nigeria to enroll in Twitter's partner support and law enforcement portals? And, uh, of course, uh, the further major agreements reached by the parties. Okay, it's... Um very um, reassuring that the federal government has finally lifted the ban on Twitter. Because if I can take you back to June 4, 2021, when the ban happened, as at then, President Muhammad Buhari himself had 3 million followers on Twitter. The vice president had 2.6 million followers. Some TV stations, including NTA, had over 3.1 million followers. Now, the, the implication of that demography, that following, is a traffic, and there are implications for the economy. Now, it's estimated that Nigeria lost close to a trillion, uh, a trillion naira within the 202 days that Twitter was, uh, was banned. Now that it's been lifted, I want to also uh, bring it to your notice that Nigeria is just a micro of the macro that is a world economy. Now, with the six conditions that have been agreed upon with Twitter, one, that Twitter would have an office in Nigeria, which it didn't have initially. Mm -hmm. Next is that Twitter will have a country representative so that will hold someone accountable. Next, register with the Corporate Affairs Commission under the Kama law. And next, also ensure that it registers under na National Broadcasting Commission laws and a few other things. And then a few other things, again, is that it will be regulated and monitored. And then check the posts, including security agencies monitoring whatever is posted. Now it's also for the sovereignty and national pride to ensure that Nigeria is able to hold accountable whoever does business or earns income from Nigeria. Also to pay fair taxes. Now to balance this, I'm happy that after 202 days, there has been an engagement. I will always insist that in everything, whether in the economy, in governance, or in private concerns, even if in family life, you must understand who your stakeholders are, do engagement with your stakeholders, and manage your stakeholders so that peace will reign. Now, uh, what's your position on uh, uh, some individuals who still say that um, uh, Nigerian tweeters uh, got the short end of the stick uh, after the seven-month ban. Yes, they got the short end of the stick because I'm an MSME, micro, small and medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. Having attended Enterprise Women's Center and uh, Pan-Atlantic University and gone to business school, I can tell you authoritatively there are two ways you make money in business. Either you increase your volume of production, meaning that you reach a wider range of people who will patronize your business, or you reduce your cost of production. Now you are in NTA. You know how much four minutes will cost on Newsline on NTA? 
that's millions of naira no msme can afford that volume of money but on on the social media platforms young people were able to start businesses launch businesses pitch their businesses now i just saw abike debris talking about the need come and the opportunity for investment diaspora remittances to nigeria is over 30 billion dollars according to national bureau of statistics now you need to understand that as long as you engage those people doing a business without advertising is like winking at a girl in the dark only you know what you're doing no one else does so when you have an opportunity a, a cheap opportunity a cheap platform social media platforms to advertise yourself right. you have an opportunity to earn more income and you know there are 208 million nigerians according to statistics over 70 percent of them 30 years and, out and below who okay. cannot be employed by the federal government the okay. social media platforms provide an opportunity All to right. be employed so and well, well. right now, now you can wink uh, in, in the and full glare of the light <laughs> the message will be put across uh, thank, thank you, you so much uh ubin naya for my coming pleasure out. to see you right all the best in other news, following its return as an agency under the direct supervision of President Muhammadu Buhari, the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NASENI, is reviving the technology transfer agreement between Nigeria and Indonesia. This was indicated at a meeting between the agency and the Indonesian ambassador to Nigeria, Dr. Usra Ehendra Harahap. Justin Bemoye reports. Under existing collaboration with Indonesia, Nigeria's workforce has received trainings on hydro turbine production amid other areas of bilateral ties. This ties now is on its path to be strengthened even more in the area of science, technology and innovation. Nigeria's National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NASENI, is instrumental in this regard, more so that it is now directly under the supervision of the presidency. Relatively, the Indonesian ambassador to Nigeria was at Naseni to discuss technology transfer issues between the two countries. We are very happy to have uh, the good uh, partner in Nigeria, especially Naseni, because uh, with the same aim, how to build our both country. Executive Vice Chairman of Naseni affirms that the presidency has approved that the agency seeks assistance in acquiring technology in key areas of security and agriculture, especially now that the government of Indonesia is willing to support. The areas already approved for us is on the development of aircraft, uh, both civil and military, the armored personnel carrier, uh, and other equipment needed by the military and of course some technologies in the areas of uh, development of uh, fertilizer from locally available resources. Naseni had taken the Indonesian delegation on a tour of its facilities. Justin Bemuni, NT News. We go over to Lagos now and join Adiola for some more reports. Adiola. Thank you, Cyril. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has reigned internet celebrity Esmaila Mustafa, also known as MOFA, and Ismailob Global Ventures Investment Limited before Justice Mojisho Ladada of the Special Offences Court sitting in Lagos for alleged money laundering. Aboladi Salami reports. The Antigraft Agency told the court that MOFA and its firm Ismailob Global Investment Limited were arraigned for alleged money laundering to the tune of over 6 billion naira. The defendants were accused of conspiracy to launder funds obtained through unlawful means, retention of such funds, transfer of funds for a suspect online in Kajimo, known as Happy Boy, as well as unlawful transfer of funds from a record label, among others. EFCC said Mofa concealed his interest in expensive restructures and other movable assets valued at 70 million naira. Mofa, however, pleaded not guilty to the eighth count, while Islamob Limited, represented also by the accused person, pleaded not guilty to the sixth count against this company. After his plea, prosecuting counsel Rosimi Oyedepo requested for a trial date. The defense counsel Boyega Uyewole, SN Ivan informed the court that they have filed a bail application and the same has been served on the EFCC. Responding to the bail application, Oyedepo asked for a time to file a response after entertaining the submission of the counsels to presiding judge Justice Dara adjourned the matter to January 18th to hear and rule on the bill application. 
The judge has ordered that Mofa be remanded in EFCC custody until his bail application is heard. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. Now, methods adopted in e-waste disposal has continued to raise dust in several fora and gatherings concerning the hazardous risk it poses to human health and the environment. Again, Abuladi Salami seeks the opinion of environmental experts on how well should electronic waste be properly disposed or recycled for other users. This heap of e-waste sites have become a regular phenomenon in some parts of Lagos, Nigeria's home to imported electronic devices. According to a report, an estimated 300 million computers and 1 billion mobile phones are produced annually, with over 40 million tons of e-waste generated globally. The volume in production has resulted to many of these electronic devices becoming obsolete and therefore discarded inappropriately, thereby providing room for technicians to take advantage of stripping these gadgets apart in search of metals to be sold, while other parts are burnt or left on dump sites to pollute the land and water. So over a period of years, if you get to that place to plant again, that particular plant picks up these compounds, and had, we call them promo bromo retardant compounds. So they pick them up, and as a result, they build up into the plant that you have planted on that soil. And they are cancer-causing. That is the major things they do. While most of these electronic devices do not decompose, when thrown open as refuse, they need to adopt a recycling process of these items or proper disposal. Experts say equates to less pollution, better resource conservation, and greater business continuity. The best way I think we can dispose our electronic gadget is to have a designated area whereby the, uh, the, we can call them a designated area where the, uh, the recyclers can be on ground, where those waste can be deposited, and those that are in need of that can go to that environment now to pick up whatever the material they have so that it won't be something that will be discarded in the environment. The clamor for a more safer climate environment has chorused by world leaders. Environmentalists agreed is the only way to protect humans from hazardous health challenges as well as aquatic and non-aquatic animals. As authorities and concerned bodies are charged to provide all the necessary material resources to properly contain waste, a change in attitude from indiscriminate dumping of refuse to an appropriate system of recovering and recycling materials safely has been suggested as crucial. In Lagos, Abolade Salami. NTA News. And Cyril will be back with the rest of the news after this break to stay on. Tammy! That's why when you do Christmas mood, so to see you with this and this and this every day now. Christmas with Globe Ericate plus plus. Now I feel listening to all my favorite jobs all night long. Breakathrough Plus Plus is here and every day is now Christmas. Existing Glow customers will get 400% bonus on every recharge and 100 MB data bonus on first recharge of the month. New Glow customers will get 1000 Nara welcome bonus. To activate, buy a new Glow SIM today or dial star 777 hash for existing Glow customers. Every day now Christmas with the Glow Breakathrough Plus Plus. She feels unwell, despite my efforts to practice good hygiene. Mom says wash your hands to keep the germs away. Washing hands is good, but surfaces can also have germs, and you shouldn't use just anything for cleaning them. Use Jig. Jig's formula has been scientifically proven to stay active for longer, giving you whitening and germ kill protection on a variety of surfaces. Disinfect to protect, just Jig it. Endorsed by National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives. Go TV, they give your TV new ginger. Then go step up your enjoyment with Coretta Wolf. Upgrade to Go TV Ginger to enjoy Go TV Jolly. If you dig Go TV Ginger, upgrade them to Go TV Jolly and we go flex you on top Go TV Man. 
Max. You already did Go TV Jolly? Upgrade them to Go TV Max and we go summer you the dear rubber Go TV Super Package. Our way to for better sports, international entertainment, and local shows. Step up, Nana. Go TV. Love it. On behalf of the government and good people of River State, I sincerely welcome all governors elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to River State for the PDP Governors Forum meeting taking place in Port Harcourt on the 16th and 17th of January 2022. My esteemed brothers who are part of the mission to rescue Nigeria as you touch down to the warmth reception of rivers people, you will experience the beauty of a rapidly growing state. PDP governors, you are welcome. Announcer, His Excellency Yesom Izumawiki, Governor, River State, C-O-N, G-S-S-R-S, P-O-S, Africa. African Cup of Nations starts on the 9th of January 2022 on NTA, powered by AfroSports. For sponsorship and advertisements, contact us on 090 9890 or 090 3513 2838. Me and you, let's get to Ghana. Hey! Right, Ghana. Ah! This is Ghana. You've come here to seek for greener pastures. Make it your worthwhile. Any guinea fowl you see is a guinea. Guinea fowl? Well, well, excuse guinea. me. It's just the name of the fowl. So, Ghana is a lot of Is it is it Nigerian beans? Mm. What? Have we met before? No. Jasper! Help me! Back in Abuja, let's talk business with Benny Adams. Benny? Thank you, Cyril. Welcome to business. We start by telling you that the long-awaited Pan-African Payments and Settlement Systems, that is uh, PAPS, has been launched in Accra, Ghana, in a virtual event. With the theme Connecting Payments Accelerating Africa's Trade, the new system allows a buyer in one African country to make a payment in his or her national currency, and the seller in another country receives payment in their local currency. Your dedication will go a long way to change the way business is done in Africa. The introduction of the African Continental Free Trade Area provides a multitude of opportunities for African businesses to trade across borders. PAPS provides a practical solution to major challenges faced by these businesses. And still on the continental market, one year into the implementation of the AFCFTA, Nigeria has launched the Agricultural Commodity Value Chain Expansion Project, aimed at improving trade information targeted at boosting revenue from non-oil exports. The project will have a systematic approach to job creation and build wealth at least 2 million Nigerians will be employed in the area of logistics, processing, supply chain management, agricultural extension services, establishment of new agri-product aggregation center, health insurance, discount card. I can tell you, just three commodities alone can cover whatever you are getting from Kudo, and even more. And on the capital market, investors lost 2.20 billion naira as equities market closed on a negative note, with the all share index depreciating by 0.01% to close at 44,604.74 basis points, as against 1.71% appreciation recorded previously. 321 million shares valued at 3.6 billion naira were traded in 4,565 deals. Equity capitalization depreciated to 24 
4.032 trillion naira. On the activity chart, Transcap topped in terms of volume with 104.5 million shares and was followed by Jais Bank and M Benefits, a plot, and MTN topped market value list. That is a business news serial. It's nice doing business with you. Thank you. Let's do it again. The Nigerian Society of Engineers is on an advocacy drive to bridge the existing gap in the engineering practice in the country. President of the Society said this when he visited the Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority in Abuja. Adebola Brooklyn reports on this and other engagements of the NTDG. The engineering practice is designed like a pyramid where engineers, technologists, technicians and craftsmen play a specific role in the actualization of project designs. Ensuring synergy between these practitioners is the major focus of the present leadership of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, which is the reason for their advocacy visits to the management of NTA. We must have a combination of the academia and the practicing engineers where there will be collaboration. You can have a month's work messed up in five minutes. So it's critical that you have these people, uh, you know, we, we, we think they are at the very bottom of the ladder, but they are critical to the success of every profession. The special interest of the Director General in modern engineering practice was commended. The building you see here is a building we all saw for many years. Nobody was bold enough to address it. So the DG now pronounced the election 2019 will be covered in that jagger. But the glory of God, the place now is a testimony. With new technology in broadcasting, they played a key role. We did not take our OB van to, to Anambra State from Enugu. We generated a studio. Virtually, um, the young engineers were of tremendous assistance to us. When the team from the Bureau of Public Service Reform engaged the DG, the welfare of staff whom the team leader, Ibrahim Dasuki Arabi, described as specialized workers, was top on the agenda. Government should look into it and see that the salaries and welfare package of NTE staff is improved because of the size and the volume of work that, that, that you do. How can we make the civil service of today be like the civil service of those days? It requires the participation of everybody. NTA DG re-echoed the fact that information is power and the Nigerian Television Authority is ready to promote the activities of the Bureau to place the Nigerian public service among 20 best public service globally by the year 2025. Adebola Brooklyn, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has sympathized with the Tahir family on the passing of Professor Girat U Tahir, the Chairman, Board of National Commission of Nomadic Education and Pioneer Executive Secretary of the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC. The President joins family, friends and members of the academic community in mourning the well-respected scholar and one of Nigeria's best education administrators who made tremendous innovation and contributions to basic education and teacher training in the country. The President prays God Almighty to forgive his shortcomings and admit him into paradise. And that concludes Network News tonight. Remember to stand with the NTA against rape and rapists. Be a star. I'm Cyril Stober. Good night.